Full disclosure, here's how things work. I'm gonna to try to stay right in this general area. Where's my brain? There we go. Um, normally what I do is I have a visual presentation and I have my notes here. So I reference my notes. Those notes did not make it down to, or make it up here to Virginia, to the DC. Now, they were sandwiched between my notes for my previous panel and my panel tonight at 11 o'clock. So I don't physically know how the hell they didn't make it to DC. <laughs> But they didn't make it to DC. So I spent a good chunk of the morning trying to redo the panel and make the notes. And then that was fine. Everything was okay. We were all good. I was remaking the notes. And then I realized all of the changes I had made to this panel, because I've been doing this panel in like three years, all of the channels, changes I had made to the panel had not taken effect. So all of my visual aids are from the previous panel. So there's going to be, thank you very, very much. I will be sure to be very generous with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <coughs> that wasn't water, damn. <laughs> that was the good stuff. I'm good, thank you. <coughs> so, between having to completely remake my notes and the visual aids, this is going to be interesting. Now, it's going to get more fun. Thank you so very, very, very much. I will give you $20 later. I like it much later, not anytime soon. But. <clears throat> that's where we are. So, I love anime. I grew up on anime. I eat, sleep, breathe. I even dream in anime most nights. It is unquestionably one of my favorite mediums, one of my favorite art forms. My perception of anime has evolved over time. <clears throat> it especially changed when I went to college, as most things do, and I began to further understand art in all its forms. And I'm going to pause here dramatically because everybody should be trying to wash the name college out of their mouth. Oh, excuse me. One of the major problems when you talk about this panel, anytime you talk about American art, is Americans have for a very, very long time, pretty much since day one, had an inferiority complex. We have systemically believed, deep down in our souls, we are inferior. And I think this is part of what drives our superiority complex, our manifest destiny and whatnot. And there, can, there have been whole books written around just trying to understand this. But when it comes to art, specifically, Americans have for a long time believed that they were second rate, whether you're talking about graphic arts, like, this is Charles Sheeler from the late 1800s, early 1900s. <clears throat> um, American artists always have considered themselves somewhat inferior to European artists. Music. Um, television arts. When you talk about the greatest Shakespearean actors ever, you typically don't think about American actors. It's that way with all the arts. And anime is going to be this, is very similar. Now, what this has led to is that it's led to a lot of American series going neglected because they were born out of this inferiority. Um, yeah, yeah, the say it's true to Asian influences, whether it be martial arts or anime, yeah. Okay, so sorry, I'm trying to get my uh, bearings here. So this is another thing, is normally I have the page and it's written out and it's in 12 point font and everything else is double spaced and everything else. No, 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 I had to write this shit on my cell phone. So please bear with me here for a second. Um, so I want to talk about the best examples of American anime. What this panel is not is a discussion on cultural appropriation. All right? Americans, especially white people, have a long, long history of that. It is a very, very real conversation that needs to be had and had again and had often. I don't know why these are so small. Um, with, the, with American history, with white America's history of ethnocentrism, manifest destiny, things like that, that is a very important discussion to have. And even some of the titles that we're going to be talking about here, you can, there's going to be a conversation that could be had about um, cultural appropriation, and I'm going to touch on those very, very briefly in passing. Those are valid conversations, those are important conversations, but those are not going to be conversations we're going to be having in this specific panel, okay? Additionally, this is not going to be a debate over um, 
whether non-Japanese animation can be anime, okay? That also is a very valid debate to have and a very good debate to have. Anytime you are applying critical thought to art, it is a good time. But we're not gonna be talking about that in this panel. We're gonna be making a couple of these assumptions and moving on. If you wanna have those discussions, that is terrific, that is good. Those are healthy things to talk about. We're just not gonna be talking about them in here. Um, excuse me. Uh, so, I do want to, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, discussion about the um, non-Japanese animation, I am going to assert has largely been uh, settled in many regards, at least temporarily, and B, it quickly turns into a discussion on racial issues. Again, important discussion to have, great discussion to have, just not here. A lot of people will argue that, or I shouldn't say a lot of people, many people are inclined to argue that in order to be anime, it has to come from Japan. And they have to make, and they begin with the assertion that anime is Japanese cartoons, which as a quick, real description, when somebody says, hey, I like your shirt, what is it? That's not, you, you really could, you could do a lot worse than just that as a quick answer to get somebody on the metro. That said, that I feel like that's kind of like saying rock and roll is only American. The Beatles, Led Zeppelin, uh, the Congos, even today, might have something to say about that. You too might have something to say about that. Um, much like rock and roll will forever have an American element to it, anime will forever have a Japanese and Asian element to it. Any further into that debate is a discussion for another time. A good debate to have, I do not want to tr sound like I'm dismissing it, but Ah! I lost my notes again. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be making that noise a lot because my phone likes to go into hibernation real fast. All right, so, real quick. Excuse me, I shouldn't have chugged that much water. Um, I have a whole panel on defining anime. And so we're going to hit those highlights really, really fast so you understand where we're coming from with this discussion. One is going to be stylized art. Now, people will point at this and say, this is a cartoon, this is anime. They're not wrong, SpongeBob definitely is an anime. But there really isn't an anime style. People will say things, there's the old uh, pornography, uh, the, su the Supreme Court judge defined pornography as, I can't define pornography, but I know it when I see it. Anime is very much the same way. When you actually consider the anime medium, it is incredibly diverse and incredibly varied. So there isn't an anime style, especially when you start looking across multiple eras. Just looking at anime in the 2010s, you see very different styles. You start considering anime in the 70s versus anime in the 2010s, they almost look totally different. Oh, this is gonna get old so fast. Um, the second thing that really is going to help define anime is going to be the overarching story. Meaning there's a beginning episode, an ending episode, and the stories in between are going to help progress, launch, and push this larger narrative. This is going to be one of the major things that is going to be influencing American animation, anime or not, going out of the 2000s and into the 20-teens. Next you're going to have the environmental emphasis and point of view animations. A lot of what helps create the feel of anime is going to be the establishing shot, the environmental shots. You typically don't see a lot of this in Western animation, and a lot of the cartoons that we're going to be talking about, a lot of the American anime we talk about, are going to be ones that include shots like this, as opposed to shows that do not. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot more to it than this. And again, this is art, this is subjective. So there's gonna be a lot of debate points, there's gonna be a lot of wiggle room. If you have a slightly different set of criteria, you're not wrong. But that's gonna be the criteria that I was using to help direct, derive this list. And I don't know why my picture is so small. So, I also want to take a moment to distinguish between anime and like anime-like. Anime-similar, mistakable for anime. Um, does anybody know what this is from, out of curiosity? Yes, excellent, very nicely done. When you, looking at this picture, would you be inclined to call this anime if you just saw this in isolation? And yet it's from Astro Boy, the anime. The anime, T-H-E-E, -E, the anime. <laughs> Again, if we focus solely on the art style, we pigeonhole a medium, and that is, no good has ever come from that in art. Um, so like I was saying, there's a great deal of subjectivity here. 
If I say a show is anime, you may not. Neither of us is automatically wrong. It's a fun debate. We're talking about art. Um, <clears throat> what if I told you The Terminator isn't a sci-fi movie? What if I told you it's a slasher movie? What if I said, instead of putting this in the sci-fi section, you should put this with Friday the 13th, or Halloween, or Nightmare on Elm Street? Narratively speaking, this has more in common, the original Terminator has more in common with Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers than it does with um, Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars and that sort of thing. So there's always going to be room for debate when you're talking about art. With that little bit of time travel that kept it back. Well, but, it, but that's, that's window dressing. Yeah. You know, that's, 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 uh, that's like uh, uh, saying uh, Friday the 13th isn't a horror movie, it's a fantasy movie, or it's a fairy tale. So you can, you can turn it in certain directions and classify it, and you're not wrong. You're just simply looking at it in the, through a different paradigm. Um, so we have a series that are not anime, even though they're kind of invited guests to a convention like this. Transformers is a fine example. You can go downstairs right now and you can buy Transformers from across 36 years of the Transformers franchise. Transformers is an anime. I've watched all of Transformers. Yes. All of it. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> the whole thing. From Gen 1 all the way through the most recent Robots in Disguise. Yes, even the Japanese series. I've watched all of it. And I love it. Although I've watched the Japanese series, so I love it a little bit less. <laughs> but Transformers is an anime. Neither is the Street Fighter cartoon. Now this is a really great Cartoon. I really recommend anybody who is a Street Fighter fan or a fan of American animation in general, check this out. This is a lot better than people give it credit for. Non-anime. Take some cues from anime, especially artistically and definitely narratively, but this is not anime. Um, Boondocks. Now we're getting into the air, into the air, no, this is still not anime, I'm sorry. Now, uh, here's Exo Squad. <laughs> this, is, this is the era of anime-like. Now, this is going to incorporate some elements of anime, very hardcore, and other elements it's going to completely eschew. You could not look at Exosquad and say, that's, that's anime. But narratively, on paper, works, reads a lot like anime. Mighty Max, really great show, really underrated, anime-like, anime-adjacent. It lives on the same street as anime. Teen Titans, anime-adjacent. And then we get into true American anime. But this isn't quite anime. You're not wrong. Because you're, comp you're comparing it to like anime at its purest sense, the Japanese anime. But you have anime coming out of Japan, and Korea, and China, and Vietnam, and India, and South Africa, and South America, and Brazil, and Canada, and France. Any time an art form leaves its nation of origin and travels to new locations around the world, that art form is going to go through a transformation. Of course American anime isn't going to be like Japanese anime, but it's still in the same family. I'm losing my notes again, don't die on me. So when we start talking about international anime, we're going to come up with these questions like, where is a witch or Afro Samurai? or Code Lokyo, uh, Yoko, Yoko, there we go. They're not on this list because they're not American. Uh, let's go, Lyoko. That's uh, French. Here's Totally Spies, this, and Spartacus. The City Under the Sea, these are all French. There's actually a very long history of French anime. A lot of true blue hardcore anime fans from back in the day, back in the you know halcyon days of 80s anime, <laughs> A lot of what we remember as being anime was actually French in origin, not Japanese. Or it was a French-Japanese uh, hybrid. How many remember um, The Mysterious Cities of Gold? Yeah, that was part Japanese, part French. So Afro Samurai, despite a lot of misconceptions and a lot of people thinking it's American, it was originally a Japanese comic before it was made into a, an anime and imported over here. It's anime in the truest sense. It was made in Japan and born in Japan and constructed in Japan and animated in Japan and given to Samuel L. Jackson, the voice actor. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's jump right into the list. Now, I'm going to go through this list. 
you're going to disagree with some of these choices, and you're not wrong. You're going to look at some of these choices, and you're going to say, that should be higher on the list. You're not wrong. <laughs> this is a subjective list. I have tried to apply objective standards. I have tried to rationalize why I say the things that I say, but your list is going to look distant, distant different, my God. <laughs> and I've got an 11 o'clock panel tonight? That's going to be fun. And that's perfectly fine, all right? What the hell? <laughs> why is this so damn small? I swear. Avatar The Last Airbender. Y'all know what this is. Y'all have seen this. Everybody here, you couldn't come into this convention if you hadn't seen Avatar The Last Airbender or Legend of Korra. It comes issued to you like samples of Tide used to come in the mail. All right? This is going to go down in history as one of the landmark works of art in American animation, anime or otherwise. This is going to help elevate, much like previous series, like Transformers did in the 1980s, like, um, I'm completely blanking, uh, Reboot did in the 1990s. This is gonna stand out as one of those great classics of cartoons. This is gonna stand out like Casper, this is gonna stand out like uh, Looney Tunes, any, any era of hot animation you're talking about, this is going to be mentioned amongst them, and for good reason. This really helped elevate children's entertainment in the late 2000s and early 20 teens by introducing them to advanced concepts that were not being talked about on other shows, and yet doing so in a manner that children could, could handle and rationalize. And we just need to be grateful it was never made into a live action movie. <laughs> Don't play that game. <laughs> All right, next up, Ruby. Again, very, very small. Um, this is a 3D web series that was created by Rooster Teeth of Red vs. Blue, the Blood Gulp Chronicles fame. Uh, it began in 2013. The tale follows a team of huntresses in their battle against the creatures of Grimm. Uh, to date, there have been, what, seven? Six, seven seasons of this? I think season six is just Okay, season six is just now starting. I don't know. Again, I was trying to cobble together my notes again like an hour before the show because I didn't realize they hadn't gone into effect. Um, it focuses, the, the, they focus on the formation of the Ruby and their efforts to solve the mystery connected to the Grim. Uh, the show is available on the Rooster Teeth website. Currently still, I believe, you can get it through all the different mediums. Um, while the show has garnered a bunch of awards for being like an, an internet show like the Webby's, it hasn't garnered much critical acclaim yet. Um, it was hugely popular and is still hugely popular with cosplayers and others in the community. Uh, we've seen like four or five of those down downstairs just today. Um, some might argue that this isn't anime because it is computer generated, despite obviously the artwork is being derived of anime inspiration. And also, I would l invite anyone to find an anime series made in the last 10 years that wasn't predominantly computer animated. Go ahead, I'll wait. Man, you got a hentai shirt on. You brave <laughs> man. Don't be talking. Don't be talking to him, man. All right. So let's go ahead and get the fight started. Ben 10. Uh, wait, All right. You heard me? <laughs> follows the eponymous Ben Tennyson as he uses the Omnitrix, Omnitrix to transform into various aliens to fight the forces of evil in all its varied forms. The first series uh, fought aired in 2005 on Cartoon Network. And it's a series that's going to run across, I think, five shows to date? Because they just rebooted it. It sucks. <laughs> um, um, yeah. And Ben 10 follows Tennyson as a 10-year-old schoolboy on a suspiciously long summer vacation <laughs> with his uh, grandfather and his sister. Now, there have been a bunch of Ben 10 live-action movies. I never, it never dawned on me to actually watch any of them. <laughs> but I randomly came across one on Cartoon Network, and uh, Grandpa Tennyson here was played by... Uh, uh, Six Million Dollar Man, Steve Austin. Um, Holy smokes. Really? What? Steve Rogers. That's Steve Rogers' character. Uh, yeah, no, 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 it wasn't Steve Rogers. It was... Uh, Lee Majors. Lee Majors, thank you. Yes, oh, yeah. Lee Majors. And I saw him as Grandpa Tennyson, and I was like, 
Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it was like when Tom Cruise was announced he was going to play Walt Disney, it was like, well, why wouldn't he? <laughs> or like Patrick Stewart with you know, Professor Xavier, you're like, I didn't realize this man was born to play this role until this moment right now. And it, like, it's, it's everything you would expect. Lee Majors is drunk and excellent as Grandpa Tennyson. The kids are annoying. The special effects are cheap. And it was great. Like, I was not prepared to enjoy this movie. And it was really wonderful. Like, after it was done and I watched it for free on Cartoon Network, where they was, I feel like I need to send them $3 or something. Like, I was not prepared. Like Lee Majors as Grandpa Tennyson, I was, I was like, I, somebody needs to get a medal for that casting job. It's like, I, it, I, it just, oh. and now, like, whenever I watch the cartoon again, I'm like, th this, I, I, yeah. Anyway, um, excuse me. So, um, Benton is going to take place across a bunch of different series. You're going to have Benton, Alien Force, and Ultimate Alien that are going to take place many years later where the uh, characters are teens and tw or tweens and teens and they have significantly darker undertones. Now I would argue the original Ben 10 is more of your anime series whereas the later ones are starting to push more and more into the western cartoon era. They have more advanced characters, they have more complicated stories and they're great. Getting away from your anime roots is not automatically bad, but you're kind of changing genres and you're getting more into the Teen Titans and then Young Justice era, whereas the original Ben 10 still felt very close to its original anime origins and anime inspirations. Now, next we have Steven Universe. Do I need to go into this? Are we all, are we all on board? Very divorced from the anime artwork. This looks like an American cartoon. In a lot of ways, this looks almost like a Simpsons spinoff of some type or a Family Guy spinoff. And yet, narratively, it is very, very complicated. And you want to talk about addressing issues that few children's shows will ever touch. And the consistent tone, the consistent theme. Again, not anime proper, not Japanese anime, American anime. And truly, breathtakingly brilliant. Right. So, oh, that's one thing that I do like to point out with this episode. So, we, I, I pointed out the animation. The animation doesn't look anything like traditional anime. Neither does Shin Crayon. Neither does Vagabond. Oh, I love Vagabond. Neither does Go Speed Racer. Okay? So, just because something may not look like, a, like traditional anime does not mean it may not still qualify as anime. I'm not going to lie, that's a big damn strike against it. But... Think about the animation, what, what is being captured, the, spirit, the feelings that are being evoked, the way the characters are being addressed, talked about, and growing before your eyes. Scooby-Doo, Mysteries Incorporated. How many of y'all have seen this? Oh, it's good stuff, ain't it? It's so good. Oh, it's so yeah. goddamn good. I was, I, was, I was on the fence because I was like, it's so good. I was like, it can't be that good. And I watched it. Yeah. Not the fair. So yeah, I, I really. had John Cena. What? <laughs> No, this one did not jump in. <laughs> it's like a long, long longer. Yes, yeah. this, this, is, this is an anime series. Oh, yeah. And this is beautiful, and oh, I could sing the praises of this series. I'm a big Scooby Doo fan to begin with. Um, I'm sorry, you mentioned John Cena. We just got to take a quick aside. How many of you have seen Scooby Doo and WrestleMania? Okay, if you're a wrestling fan at all, I strongly encourage you to check it out because nobody in the WWE is taking it seriously and it's perfect. <laughs> like the Scooby-Doo universe and the like the kayfabe WWE universe intersect so gloriously. <laughs> and when like Sin Cara is telling the Scooby gang a story and John Cena is translating because he speaks luchador. <laughs> It is so deliciously stupid. It is, it is great. Like, I, I, I understand why it was never released in theaters, because once they put it out there, we would never have another comedy movie ever made, because we would have reached the zenith of all comedy. Um, but much like Ben 10, Scooby-Doo is not on anime. Okay? The Scooby-Doo series, which is going to stretch from 1969, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, to the present day, Be Cool, Scooby-Doo. Uh, there we go, yeah. Mystery... Why are you so damn small? What the hell? 
Mystery Inc. is an outlier because it's not a cartoon like the others, but the, the anime series. It takes place in Crystal Cove, and it's a, in theory, it's a precursor to the original 1969 series. Spoiler alert. The series ends with them leaving Crystal Cove to drive across the country, and they decide they're going to solve mysteries along the way. The idea being setting up what they're doing in the original series. It is a really, really good series. It's beautifully animated. There are, it is filled with fan service and in jokes that only fans are going to get and everything. It, it, it's, there's a great, like, Hanna-Barbera, like, salute to uh, Blue Falcon and Dynamut and Dr. Quest, and it's, it's, it's delightful. It's also, again, very well created, very well voiced, very well voiced. You're going to see some of uh, oh, Megatron, um, Frank Welker's best work, and that is saying something for the god of voice acting. Um, his some of his work has is real in later years has really come forth. Uh, his work on uh, Curious George is absolutely breathtaking. If you're a fan of voice acting, I recommend you check that out. It's completely unrelated. This is not even remotely anime, but oh my God, is it an amazing performance by a man who basically says nothing in the entire show. He's doing nothing but squeaking, and it's incredible. <laughs> um, but it, some of his best work really comes forward in his performance in, as uh, Fred Jones in this series. So yeah. Next we have the 2011 Thundercats. Now, as we all know, Thundercats is getting rebooted as Thundercats Go, and the internet done lost its damn mind. <laughs> Everybody said, how dare you ruin this masterful work of American animation, this pillar upon which all cartoons will forever be judged. And apparently these people never watched the original cartoon, because <laughs> it was dumb as shit. <laughs> Um, and I love it. I love, I, I will go to my grave that Rankin and Bass is one of the unsung heroes of American animation. Rankin and Bass produced some of the best stuff in cartoons. And I love me some Thundercats. I still have some of my old Thundercats toys. But y'all, don't be playing that game. Don't be pretending like you every night, you, you know, pray around dinner and uh, thank you, Lord, for this food. Ancient spirits of evil. <laughs> Don't, don't, uh, uh no, none of that. You know, you don't call your friends with like, Thundercats ho, what's up? No. So don't play that game. In 2011, they tried to relaunch this series, and they made the series all nine Thundercat fans had been waiting for. <laughs> all right, was it darker? Yes. Was it more realistic? Yes. Did they take the characters in new and interesting and vibrant directions? Yes. Did they create an overarching story? Yes. Did they fill it with references to the original series? Yes. Did they have callbacks to the original series? Yes. Was it everything Thundercats fans have been waiting for? Yes. What did Thundercats fan do? I'll uh, torrent it. Yeah, this thing bombed badly because nobody watched it. Not a damn person. And if you're sitting here saying, I totally tuned in, you lie, don't lie in this house of God. Don't play that game. You didn't watch it. Nine people watched it and they were the director's mama. No, nobody watched this, which is a shame. They really tried to bring their A game with this show. They took everything that American cartoons had learned from Avatar The Last Airbender and poured it into this show. Now, the end result is not great. This is not a terrific show, but it is a good show. It is a solid show. And it's not the original series because that's very much a cartoon, not just a cartoon, specifically an 80s cartoon. Yeah. But, oh, sorry. Um, the, this is an attempt to revitalize the franchise. If you remember, in the late 2000s and very early 20s, there were a lot of attempts to resurrect 80s franchises. You saw the, he -Man, the Masters of the Universe cartoon, another really good show that just did not have the viewership to support it, even though they took everything that worked as He-Man and amped it up. <coughs> we now see this happening again with the new She-Ra car car cartoon. And I cannot tell you how excited I am for that because it's got Netflix money behind it. And Netflix money is, you know, promising. 
Um, and it also looks like it's a little bit self-aware. The problem with the Thundercats cartoon, kind of like the He-Man cartoon, was it took itself a little too seriously. Like, it's great if you want to take your cartoon seriously. It's great if you want to take your anime seriously. But it's still cartoons. It's still little squiggly lines of people that are fighting over little squiggly lines. That's fine. Look, I bleed Transformers, all right? I do, in fact, end every prayer with until all are one. So I'm not throwing stones here. But come on. You can only take these things so seriously at times. You can take them as seriously as they will narratively allow. And a story built around shipping furries can only be taken so, so seriously so often. Right. It only ran for nine episodes? Thundercats? No, it actually ran for two in, uh, for a season and a half. It ran for one full season and then like a half or two thirds of the second season, and they cut it off. Um, I don't believe it was brought to a conclusion, but they were given advance notice that it was ending, so they were able to make some accommodations for it. All right, so now we're going to talk about Cyber Six. How many of you remember this? <laughs> You've never heard of this. You are not alone. <laughs> okay, so Cyber 6, we are now moving out of the United States. Okay, Cyber 6, um, <clears throat> airing in 1999, Cyber 6 is a very complicated case because while the series began in Argentina, it was published in Italy and animated in Spain. Okay, yeah, this is, this is very, very interesting. Explaining Cyber 6 is very complicated because of how diff how... I don't want to give away too much of this plot. Basically, it is about a Nazi cyber vampire yep. hunting other Nazi monsters. Good. <laughs> so yeah, the comic series is much darker than the cartoon, which is saying something. <laughs> um, but the anime series really didn't pull many punches. When it aired in America, because Fox built this up, Fox Cartoons brought this to America, and they were—I mean, they—they they carved out a nice prime time slot. They were gonna—they were gonna bank on this because they knew they had a winner. Was it dark? Yes. And again, '90s. Was it dark? Was it you know vibrant? Was it complicated? Was it well made? Was it beautifully animated? All right, we've got something to go with our X-Men cartoon. And then it had the audacity, the temerity to have cross-dressing, mm -hmm. to have a character who was supposedly a guy at day, but was a woman at night. We can't have that on TV. And so it lasted two episodes. Oh yeah, it introduced the audiences to the hero. She's a female, she's a female, but she pretends to be a male biology teacher during the day. Um, <clears throat> The show ran for, again, a, a, two episodes in the U.S., I think maybe a couple of more in like syndication or something, but it received very little audience and it had the uh, staggering backlash for people who never watched it. Like, parents groups were all like, how dare you have cross-dressing, but they didn't actually watch the show because they could have complained about, you know, the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the cross-dressing was the problem, all right. So now we're gonna take a radical detour. Yeah, 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 they're just all in Spanish. Oh, okay. <laughs> it might be, I don't know. I haven't checked, I haven't checked since I last did this uh, panel, which was a couple of years ago. But speaking of last doing this panel, we're not gonna detour, because this is where the panel goes to hell. Because this is where the panel was from several years ago. Things have happened. So, I don't have any more references, visual references. Excuse me. So, now normally this is where I'll talk about Monica, which is a series from Brazil. It's also actually really terrible. It's not terrible, it's actually really great. I just hate it. Um, I mean, I'm in no way the target demographic probably has something to do with it. But um, there's Holy Avenger. Holy Avenger, I think it's German? No, no not German. Uh, Italian? No, no, because it's American. Uh, no, Holy Avenger is uh, Brazilian as well. This is actually from the comic for Holy Avenger. This actually isn't the animation. Um, 
And this is Flutter, this is Canadian. This is the first non-Asian anime cartoon to win the Tokyo Anime Award. It's a 2006 short film. <clears throat> uh, it's a seven minute film about childhood friends. Um, it's every bit the gut punch it sounds like. Um, and it was made in Photoshop and it was simply a passion project. And if you haven't seen it, I don't know if it's available on YouTube. It was for a hot minute, but that may have just been sheer pirating. Um, comparisons have been made to the Gorillaz music videos and uh, Linkin Park's Breaking the Habit and um, Evolution Baby by Pearl Jam. Now, I wanted, I'm just going to leave it up there because everybody loves the Gorillaz. <laughs> um, so I, this is the point where we need to talk about two series <clears throat> that I don't have any visual aids for, so I'm going to apologize. The first is Dragon Prince, the Netflix series. Yeah. How many of you have seen this? Damn, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Avatar, so of course it's, good. it's fantastic. If you haven't seen it, it is Lord of the Rings done anime, but not sucky like Record of Lotus Wars. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I? Did I did, I'm sorry, did I hit? Did I hit a nerve? <laughs> I was, okay, to give you an idea, it's like Dungeons and Dragons 4th edition versus 2nd edition, which might, might be the nerdiest thing I've ever said in my life. And since I end every prayer with until all are one, that's really saying something. Um, <clears throat> Dragon Prince is a series that's available on Netflix. Um, it is about a war between humans and elves the elves think the humans killed all the dragons, but some elves discover that the dragon eggs that they thought had been destroyed actually had just been stolen, so they're on a quest to rescue them. Check it out. Really good? I know it's really good. You're in a hentai shirt. Shut up. I'll trust you. You think Bible Black's animation is great. Don't, don't, don't pretend. Don't play that game. Don't like that. Bible Black? I've never seen that. You lying bastard. Every last one of you. Anyway. And Voltron. Legendary, the Legendary Defender. So I like talking about Voltron because it gives me the chance to, to segue into talking about American anime versus Japanese anime that are made from the same series. Are Macross and Robotech the same thing? Is Voltron the same thing as Golion? Now, this, that's, that's outside this discussion. That starts to getting into the sub versus dub debate from back in the 90s. But it is an important thing to discuss. And uh, when you talk about Voltron, the legendary defender, you then have to talk about the Voltron force from the early 2000s that was actually kind of good. Like, a lot of people never got past the awful rap song at the opening. <laughs> um, and then there was the early 90s, Voltron the Third Dimension. We don't want to talk about that. <laughs> no good, we'll come out of talking about that. But Voltron the Legendary, uh, the Legendary, uh, Voltron the Legendary Defender is a series that's available on Netflix now. You probably have seen it, and if you haven't seen it, you're lying. Or if you haven't seen it and you're not lying, you saw the original Voltron, so you know what this is about. It's about a giant mech with cat hands and cat feet. And any time you try to get five cats to work together on anything, it's impossible. So clearly what you are looking at is the single greatest power in the universe. <laughs> Voltron is the greatest combiner in fiction. You can talk to me about Devastator all you want. You can talk to me about any of the Megazords you want. At the end of the day, if you've never seen Voltron, we can go grab some Aboriginal dude from right out of the outback on a walking tour and just sit down a Voltron toy in front of him, he will recognize the magnificent greatness <laughs> that is before him. It is a giant robot made out of five cats. Five cats have come together to get something done that didn't involve food <laughs> or a little red dot. And can we please talk about the little sword that has little pitchforks coming up out of it that will cut a motherfucker. <laughs> So when you look upon the greatness that is Voltron, you know you are looking at magnificence. And then they decided they were going to make a show that was going to do nothing but advertise to archive of our own 
We know you want to write smut, you dirty, dirty-minded fangirls. Here's all the material that they couldn't fit into Supernatural. <laughs> Have at it. Voltron the Legendary Defender is very possibly the future of entertainment going forward. It is a pre-existing property that has totally been revolutionized and totally transformed, in this case by Netflix and DreamWorks, correct? It's, yeah. it's part of DreamWorks, yeah. And they have taken an original property that was pre-existing, breathed new life into it, that at the same time appeases classic fans and brings in new audiences. Anybody who was a fan of the original Voltron has at least approval for the modern Voltron. Yes, there's probably something you wish was different. Yes, the robot looks different. Some, you know, yes, oh, there's no Sven. What am I ever going to do without Sven? Because he was such an important part of the narrative in the original cartoon with that hippie, dicky little voice actor that he had. Anybody who has seen this, this cartoon and nothing previously can go back and watch those shows and go, oh, I know what this is. Only Legendary Defender did it better. When we look at Voltron, we see all we know of modern entertainment coalescing to produce a new product. This is the face of cartoons going forward. Everything we're going to see being produced going forward is going to take its notes from the creation of Voltron or something similar. They're going to learn lessons from this, much like they learned it from Avatar going previously. Why are you skipping around? You were supposed to be on the gorillas. Don't make me a liar, jerk. All right, do we have any questions? Really, nothing? Y'all y'all just walked in. You were, don't pretend you don't, you, hi! She's taking a picture of me. We, we established I'm an attention whore, right? Okay, I was gonna say. What do I, what am I doing? Oh, some of you were like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm moving on with the presentation. Because I think we're running out of time. Okay, no questions? All right, then we'll close up. So, this is always a controversial topic. Um, sorry, uh, this is always a controversial topic. Anytime you talk about non-Japanese series, the discussion of cultural appropriation or natural evolution for the spread of an art form comes up. As we talked about at the beginning of the panel, when an art form spreads across the globe, there's going to be issues of cultural appropriation. That is an important conversation to have. I don't want to shut down that conversation. I'm just simply saying it's not what we were going to talk about here today. If you look at some of these shows and say, that's not cool, they appropriated this or that, you're, you might not be wrong. But that's a, that's a different discussion than what we're talking about here. Um, as fans of the medium, we need to discuss this and explore it. This is art. In much the same way you would talk about the Sistine Chapel and the works of Leonardo, you need to talk about art that you see in your everyday life. Talk about cartoons, talk about comic books, talk about advertisements. Bring the same gravitas and education you might talk about Beethoven or uh, Childish Gambino and talk about it with this current stuff. Talk about what is in front of you today because it is every bit as deserving. Whatever cartoons you watch, whatever musical jingles you enjoy, appreciate it with the same gravitas and respect that you would appre appreciate the works of Vivaldi because it is just as deserving. This is art in your day-to-day -day life and that makes it important. This is art that you love, that makes it important and it is worth discussing. And you can say, I like it because I like it and that's fine and that is valid. But you can dig deeper into why you like it and in understanding what makes anime anime or anime like, anime adjacent, or simply a cartoon can help you appreciate and understand the art you love anymore. Applying a critical evaluation to the art you love will always reward that love. You will always come out of it appreciating your favorite series even more. You don't have to be a snob about it. And if somebody else just wants to say, look, I like it because I like it, that is fine and you have no right to challenge them on that. But if you can engage a fellow fan in a debate about whether or not Avatar The Last Airbender is anime or simply in a cartoon, you both ultimately win. Unless they want to talk about Voltron The Third Dimension, in which case nobody wins. <laughs> All right, do we have any questions before we close up? Uh, Yo. What's, um, 
I'm sorry, I need to stop. Is this about Voltron, the third dimension? No. Okay, good. <laughs> Please proceed. Say, would, there, would there be any shows that, um, Japanese shows that would be considered not anime? I would say a bunch. Uh, the, what is it, the Doka Doka show? Um, I would argue a lot of the NHK history series would go that way. In the uh, late, in the early 80s, during the deregulation era under Reagan, you're going to see an explosion of broadcast hours, but, and Nickelodeon is going to be the one of the ones that's really going to pioneer bringing over just anything they can get. And they're going to bring over all sorts of like <coughs> um, fairy tales and history stories. Usually, when you see uh, legendary Bible stories, I think it was. That was a that was a Japanese studio, so it's going to have anime art style, but it's but it really just looks like anime. Narratively, it has nothing to do with anime. They don't have a lot of the establishing shots. They don't have the the, narr the structure as well. I would say what most of us would call anime today, if we were to apply those standards to Speed Racer, it wouldn't it wouldn't stand up to it. Yeah. Um, and so you're going to have that kind of stuff. Uh, the um, yeah, I would say there's a lot of anime like those. I can't think of any other additional examples off the top of my head, but it wouldn't take long to populate a list. Yes? Uh, of your list of top 10 American animes, uh, if somebody were to ask you, uh, I've never seen any of them, which one would you recommend to start with? Probably Voltron. It's the most immediately available. Um, it's got the following behind it. There's plenty of reference material, and it's still running. And so they have the ability to get, not just get into the fandom, but to get caught up in it as well. Because it's, there's a very different feeling for a franchise when it is still alive. Once the franchise has completed and you're looking back on something, there's a different feel to it. Um, any other questions before we close it? Yes? Uh, maybe it's because I came in late. Um, it's okay, we still love you. <laughs> I just remember, years ago, they kind of described it can be considered anime because it had to be produced in Japan. And that was the only like final thing of it, if it or it is not. And I'm not gonna say that's, I'm not gonna say that's not a valid criteria, but very little anime is produced in Japan. And very little anime has produced in Japan for a long time. A lot of Japanese animation studios farm out their production to Korea, Vietnam, uh, I think Thailand has a couple of animation studios. The, you've also got the fact that the... Yeah, he, he's not animated, but just produced, and that's why he said just produced in Japan. Because he said most of the music does. I, 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 yeah, yeah. and, and I, I, that's... He is welcome to his opinion, but his opinion's wrong. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not gonna say that in public, I'm just gonna say that in my mind. <laughs> yes, no. Uh, no. okay. And again, that's, that's, that's obviously a good debate to have. And I, I in all joking aside, he might not necessarily be wrong. I do not agree with him. Um, and I feel, when I talk to Japanese fans, Japanese anime fans, I would be inclined to think many of them would not agree with him either. But that is neither here nor there. We need to, cl yes? Can you give the list in order? No, because it was complete, it, it there was never like a, it was not in a, a consistent order to begin with. Yeah, I know that's why I said. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand. I didn't want to actually do that top ten because I don't want to talk about. I don't want to try to quantify why Voltron is better than Avatar, especially when Voltron ran for three times as long as Avatar. But Voltron also had three times the budget. That kind of thing starts to get really unfair, and that takes work. And I'm lazy. <laughs> so, um, speaking of lazy, I am an author. My name is Robert V. Aldrich. I'm here promoting my website, TeachTheSky.com, as well as my books for Kaiju and Proton. They are available downstairs in the dealer's room. Um, you, if you've enjoyed the panel, please let the convention know, and hopefully I'll be back next year. My name is Robert Aldrich. If you did not enjoy the panel, my name is Charles Dunbar. <laughs> um, I want to thank everybody very much for coming. Please enjoy the rest of Anime USA, and have a safe and happy weekend. Thank you.